Welcome to Invista Experts on Demand, your unbiased, informative source for supply chain and IT best practices and industry updates. Today we are talking with David Eckel, Managing Partner of Invista, and we are tackling the topic of best practices for wireless infrastructure design and implementation in a warehouse. Welcome David, thanks for joining us. Thank you, it's great to be here today. Why is wireless infrastructure an integral part of a WMS installation? The reason why it's an integral part of a WMS implementation is the fact that when we're installing these systems, we're more than likely going to be using RF mobility devices to pick within these locations. And those devices use wireless connectivity to talk back to the WMS. Great, thanks David. Now when selecting a partner, should you seek out a system designer or a hardware provider? Yes, you definitely want to select a system designer instead of a hardware provider. A system designer is going to go through the process of understanding your requirements. These requirements are going to be different for each and every facility. A hardware provider, they're interested in doing one thing, and that's selling you their product. So now that we know that we need a system designer, tell me about the expertise that you should look for in that partner. The expertise that you're looking for in a partner are one that completely understand your implementation. What they do is they can design the solution, they can implement the solution, and they can also manage it after it's been installed. Somebody might want to always go with the lowest cost vendor. Is that recommended practice or would you say that's not always the best bet? The old adage that you get what you pay for is definitely true when we're talking about wireless infrastructure implementations. When you go to the low cost provider, they may have done a great job in designing it, they may have thought through everything, but more than likely low cost providers are going to cut corners. They may have not done a site survey, physically been there, understand exactly what's going into the facility. So you get what you pay for. Price is important, but the overall design and solution is more important. Now that we've touched on costs, let's talk about the plan. How important is it to have a detailed plan? It's extremely important to have a detailed plan. What most providers do, those that you're going to partner with, they're going to create what's called a land planner. And that's an overall design plan for your facility. It's going to identify where all the wireless access points are going to be located. It's going to take into consideration all the material handling equipment that's going to be in the facility. That's important to do, and that's what your overall land planner is going to do for you. Now that we know a little bit about the land planner, who all should be involved in the process of putting it together? The best plans and the best solutions and implementations early on are going to involve all parties that are involved with the WMS implementation. You want to have people that are not only in operations as well as IT at the table to help you lay out the initial design and plan and put together the actual timeline for implementation. You talked about the importance of choosing a system designer. Talk about the expertise that they need to have to be successful. The expertise that are required are, are really twofold. It's extremely helpful to find a solution provider that has supply chain expertise in house. That will make things more streamlined as you're going through not only the design process, the implementation process, but also the go live process. So when we're talking about specific expertise, these folks should be able to design a wireless infrastructure, take into consideration all the things that go into a warehouse. Okay, there's material handling equipment that is required within these facilities. Now considering the needs of the operation, how far should we be looking ahead to future needs? Well, we've definitely got to take in consideration the existing now needs, right? What's happening today? But we'd be selling ourselves short when we're looking for a provider if they weren't taking into consideration future needs, whether we're talking a year, three years, or five years out. So it's very important to have what I would call a master plan. Where are we going as far as it relates to material handling equipment? what's happening within the warehouse as far as bringing on new operations, whether that's a pick and pack operation, that is definitely what we need to take into consideration. What additional components should be considered right now? Well, in the now, we definitely need to consider things that are also going to be on the network that shares this wireless infrastructure. Things like IP cameras, security systems should definitely be taken into consideration. And that's why it's important, again, to have the right people at the table at the very beginning. 
So we've talked about what goes into the planning, who's involved. Let's talk about the timeline for implementation. How do you develop that? Well, the timeline is going to be based off the requirements that have been gathered. So a good example of this is in a wireless infrastructure, we want to install that before the material handling equipment ever arrives because if we don't do that, that's going to cause delays because as we're trying to install wireless in the ceiling, there's conveyors going in and racking going below. So the time frame or the overall plan is extremely important. And the key piece to that is actually working with the other integrators and people within the facility, whether that's the material handling folks or the structured cabling crew. It's extremely important that we're all on the same page. So now that we've talked about the timeline for an implementation, tell me what makes a successful implementation. Well, a successful implementation is definitely uh, gauged by the client and how easy it was to go live. So when we're talking about implementations, there's a lot of people that have to work hand in hand to make that go smoothly. So the key to successfully implementing one of these systems is actually testing, verifying well in advance of the go live. And then another key piece is to actually be there during go live in case something would come up, an issue or a question would happen, being there to resolve it quickly so go live can be considered a success. That makes a lot of sense. So with so many components, what kind of testing should be done on the system? Great question. When we look at testing, there's really three phases that need to happen. First, after the actual system has been installed. So the wireless access points are in place, they're functioning. We would do what's called a site survey and we'd verify that signals are actually strong and it's what we expected. So we're going back and we're testing against that design, that initial design. The next test that happens is after the material handling equipment has been installed, conveyors are up and running, racking is in place, we're going to come back and do the same site survey, verify that the signal strengths look good, the coverage area is what we expected, and then finally, once the customers moved in, we should go back and test again. When the facility is 75% full, so we're talking about racks that have boxes that, depending on the density, is going to affect the actual signal, we go back in and test and verify signal strength, and then we certify that particular installation. Very interesting insights. Thank you so much to David for participating in InVista Experts on Demand.